of Roke Bay, Gordon Head. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, in the lead up to the last election, British Columbians were sold a bill of goods by this government. The promise of 100,000 jobs, $100 billion prosperity fund, $1 trillion hit to GDP, and a debt free BC, and on and on. This government has spent the last three years touting BC's imminent LNG industrial boom. They sent a signal to the market that if industry wanted to do business in BC, it had better have something to do with LNG. We were summoned for an urgent summer session of the Legislature to debate the project development agreement for Petronas's LNG proposal. Yet the months come to pa continue to pass. The global market supply of gas gets bigger and bigger. Company after company move on to other jurisdictions, and this government remains silent about a plan B. My question to the Minister is this. Given the monumental failure of this government's plans for LNG, what is Plan B for the BC economy? Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And the only monumental failure in this House is that member's inability to understand how important natural gas could be to the GHGs in the world sent from British Columbia. <laughs> but let's give the member a little recap, are we? We have a conditional FID. We have a project development agreement on one major project in Prince Rupert. We have another. We have environmental assessment certificates on three or four additional other projects. We have 20 proposals in British Columbia, 20 proposals for LNG opportunities in BC. Just yesterday, honourable member, I was at Tilbury where they're actually building a tank and expanding the Tilbury operation of Fortis for LNG to go into places like Hawaii. I know the member has an issue with First Nations having opportunities and changing their lives and the opportunity of generation about LNG, but just yesterday the Tawasin First Nation announced that they're going to do a referendum on accepting a proposal from a company, Mitsui, to put an LNG plant on their property in Tawasin for the future of their community. pipeline benefit agreements across the north for communities of First Nations who will see an opportunity for trades and opportunities and a change in the life of their young people, an opportunity for jobs, Honourable Speaker. We are moving forward with an LNG. I know it drives the member crazy, but that's the way it is, Honourable Member. Member Bay, Gordon Head. Well, speaker, I think we should change the name of the ministry to the Ministry of Gas and Hot Air, based on that speech. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, in just two short weeks, leaders from around the world will descend on Paris to attend the 21st Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Next week, the Premier will attend a First Minister's meeting in Ottawa to come up with a national strategy prior to Paris. Yet our government's promise of wealth and prosperity from a hypothetical LNG industry is entirely inconsistent with a BC, let alone a national strategy to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Question? What will the government do today to invest in BC's economy in light of the monumental failure of its LNG plans and the urgent need to transform to a low carbon economy consistent with international efforts? Minister. So maybe the member ought to do a little bit of research, and I know he thinks he's an expert on it. But maybe he should go to China and see just how bad the air is, and know that the cleanest burning fossil fuel in the world can actually change the lives and health outcomes for hundreds of millions of people. If he did, he would recognize 
recognize that the world needs a transition fuel to reduce populate, uh, pollution, reduce GHGs in the atmosphere, take the particulates out of the air, give people better health outcomes, and while at the same time doing that, to help the economy in British Columbia, to improve the lives in Asia by bringing LNG from British Columbia to Asia to help them deal with a significant problem, while at the same time getting the maximum benefit from a resource that British Columbians have every right to get the benefit from. Yeah.